there are a ton of questions in regards to electric vehicle charging. And one of the questions that comes up quite frequently is about EV adapters. Which EV adapter do I need? Well, that's kind of hard to answer because there are adapters for DC fast charging and then there are adapters for AC charging. So let's take a deeper dive. Many people wonder when they get an EV, what kind of adapter they should buy. Should they buy any? How many should they buy? What kind of adapter should they buy? Well, there is so many options. So I have a whole bunch of adapters. I've been, well, driving electric cars for six years now. Six years ago, there were not nearly as many charging options around the world as we have today. But if you go visit friends or if you go off the beaten path, there may not be any charging options. And unless your mobile charging connector or your portable charger, your EVSE actually plugs in somewhere at the place you're going to, well, you're out of luck. You can't charge unless you may have an adapter that fits a plug that you find there. So does that mean you only need adapters for AC charging? Well, not necessarily. You may need adapters for DC fast charging as well. With uh, the current transition here in North America to the uh, Tesla plug, um, to the NAX, the North American charging standard, um, there will be more DC fast charging locations out there with that plug on it. Also, uh, many auto manufacturers, now almost all auto manufacturers, have an agreement with Tesla so that they can access the supercharging network at some point this year hopefully sooner than later <laughs> but while well, all these other vehicles these non-tesla vehicles are ccs so they're a ccs type 1 and there is an adapter needed to charge at a supercharger because the a supercharger has a tesla plug some tesla superchargers here in the us are equipped with what's called the magic dock the magic dock is a nice thing you use the tesla app and uh, you can unlock the magic dock so that when you actually pull the Tesla plug, it comes out with a CCS adapter and you can just charge your CCS uh, vehicle. That already works at this point. In Europe, uh, since Europe has a mandated standard for CCS2, um, all Teslas there have a CCS2 plug, so superchargers there have a CCS2 plug. They do not have the NAX or the Tesla proprietary plug or whatever you want to call it. So over in Europe, it is a little bit easier. So Tesla just has to open up their chargers in the app uh, to be used with other vehicles and they can just plug in. There is no adapter needed. Here in the US, a little bit different. So not many have the magic dock. So not many uh, cars will be able to charge at most uh, superchargers without an adapter. There is currently still no adapter that I have seen. Um, I guess everybody is waiting now on the first auto manufacturer. Uh, I'm not sure who's gonna be first, Ford or GM, probably one of those two, uh, to come out with such an adapter to be used with their vehicles at Tesla superchargers. I do not have such an adapter because, like I said, they don't exist yet. Um, so if you get one, if you get more information, like if you own a GM or a Ford product, an EV, uh, let me know down below in the comments. Have you heard anything from your manufacturer? Are they going to provide you such an adapter? Are they giving it to you for free or do you have to pay for it? Leave a comment down below. So um, that's definitely one point where we need a adapter for DC fast charging. Now. Here in North America, that also goes the other way around. Again, in Europe, the mandated plug is a CCS2. So a Tesla driver already for all along was able to just plug in at any DC fast charger. No problem, they have the same plug. So that already worked. But here in the US, that is not the case. Um, a Tesla driver cannot just go to an Electrify America or to an EV Go charger and plug in because they do not have a plug that fits a Tesla. Like I said, currently we're in the transition to the next, to the North American charging standard, which is the Tesla plug. So these will become available, 
but not all of them will be changing and they won't be changing quickly. It's not like this goes overnight. This will be a transition probably taking multiple years. Also, the CCS will stick around because we still have a whole bunch of CCS cars out there. But if one with a Tesla would like to charge at a Electrify America or EVgo right now, um, one would need a Tesla adapter. Um, it's a CCS type one to Tesla and that works with Tesla vehicles only. Now that's it. I just acquired a nice adapter like that from EV Dance and um, I was actually impressed. Uh, it is made in China like most things are these days, <laughs> but I was impressed by this adapter. It looks basically identical to the original Tesla adapter. I really didn't see much of a difference uh, between the two. They're about the same weight. They're both pretty heavy and uh, the ratings are very similar. So even this EV Dance uh, adapter here is rated at uh, 250 kilowatts. And that is currently the most you can get out of any uh, Tesla supercharger anyway, or that is the highest that we currently can charge basically. So if you have a Tesla, you could uh, purchase this adapter from EV Dance. It is quite a bit cheaper than the Tesla original. The, te the uh, Tesla sells their adapter for $250 um, on their website. This EV Dance adapter is available um, currently for under a hundred bucks. So, um, it, and, and it functions great. So I think this is a great value. It, like I said, the specifications are uh, very similar. Actually, the Tesla adapter specifications say it's good for up to 500 volts. This says it's good for up to a thousand volts. So it actually possibly has a better uh, insulated housing here, um, but both do 250 kilowatts, both do 500 amps. So uh, go check out uh, the EV Dance adapter. There's a link down below in the description for it. What other DC fast charging adapters are there? Well, there are not many. Uh, mainly uh, DC fast charging is CCS or Tesla plug. And well, we have the CCS cars and the Tesla cars and uh, Tesla cars were able to access the CCS chargers with the adapter provided from Tesla. Unfortunately, the other way around, that has not been the case yet, but as said earlier, this will improve. Now, the problem was early on, there were not that many Tesla superchargers. And so Tesla actually had another adapter at the time, which is this one here, the uh, Tesla uh, Chedemo adapter. And so this allowed a Tesla driver to go to a Chedemo station and plug into the adapter and plug the adapter into the Tesla and charge at only 50 kilowatts, but it was DC fast charging and it definitely was better than no charging. This adapter was discontinued a few years ago because there are so many superchargers now, this is no longer a need. And this adapter, this Chedemo adapter was also made uh, for Europe. This was uh, made with the Tesla plug for the US and the Type 2 plug for Europe, as Tesla used the Type 2 plug in Europe and never used the Tesla proprietary plug there. So it, it exists in both versions for US and Europe, but it's discontinued no matter what, because there are so many Tesla superchargers now that this thing was really not needed. But uh, as my uh, video from last week says, uh, it may actually be useful for Cybertruck owners. So if you haven't seen that video yet, um, go check it out. And uh, well, then you know what this could be used for. That is basically almost it, except for one adapter that just came out about last week or so, <laughs> last 10 days. And that is an adapter for Chedemo vehicles, like the Nissan Leaf. There is lots and lots of Nissan Leafs out there. They're very great vehicles, very reliable. Um, and there's so many out there. They've been in production since 2010. They had a little few, they had a few issues early on, 2010, 2011 with their battery degradation, which uh, has pretty much resolved uh, with the second generation from like 12, 2012 on. But, these uh, Nissan Leafs, and there's a few other products out there, they have a Chedemo plug. The Chedemo plug is uh, basically disappearing in the US and in Europe. It is the standard in Japan. There's 
nothing else there, I guess. I don't know if they have anything else. And the Tudemo plug is not a bad plug other than that it's big and clunky and pretty heavy. But uh, in regards to power handling and communication, it was very reliable and can handle extreme amounts of power, even though all these vehicles and these chargers that we have are only 50 kilowatts. So now recently in Europe, a product came out, a adapter for these Nissan Leafs and other Chedemo vehicles so that they can plug into a CCS charger. And since this came out in Europe, this is a CCS type two. So that does not work here in the US because we have CCS type one, which is a slightly different plug. But there is another DC fast charging adapter uh, that now just came out to make those Nissan Leafs go even longer. <laughs> Since as far as I know, there's no retrofit kit to retrofit those to CCS. Um, I may be wrong there. So if you know if there's a retrofit kit for a Nissan Leaf, um, leave a comment down below, please. So we all know. But that is about it for the DC fast charging side. Now, do you need any of these adapters? Well, that depends. Do you travel often long distances where you need to fast charge obviously all the time unless you may be staying at a hotel overnight where you can charge then you may benefit from one of those adapters if you drive a tesla you may not need one if you drive a ccs type vehicle you certainly will benefit from the adapter that allows you to charge at the Tesla superchargers because there are so many locations and there are so many added every week. It's unbelievable how fast Tesla is building out the supercharger network. As a CCS driver, you will definitely benefit from having a fast charging adapter, a DC fast charging adapter, so that you can access the Tesla supercharging network. But that is only if you actually travel. And many people say, well, maybe I just do because if, there's always if, there's many ifs. Well, how often does if actually happen? Don't buy adapters because of what if, because if usually never comes. <laughs> so unless you really know you'll be traveling, then yeah, obviously you wanna get one. If you don't know if you will be traveling, if this electric car is your daily driver, well, you're going from home to work and back, maybe do your grocery runs with it, whatever, uh, run around town a little bit, you probably won't benefit from having a, a DC fast charging adapter. So don't waste your money on a DC fast charging adapter unless what if comes and you know in a couple weeks or so you'll be traveling with this car and you look on an app like PlugShare, you go through, you plan your route and you see, oh, I really could benefit having this DC fast charging adapter so I can charge here at this Tesla supercharger. So, well, and this is only in the US and this still has to happen, okay? No adapter yet so that a CCS car can go to every supercharger except for the few superchargers that are equipped with a magic dock. And if it has a magic dock, you don't have to buy an adapter. So don't waste your money. Um, for Tesla drivers, well, you have plenty of superchargers available. Do you really need an adapter? There is more chargers per location than at CCS locations usually. Um, yes, Tesla charging locations can be very busy in certain areas, but in that same area, a CCS charging station can also be very busy. So it may not be of uh, any benefit to you to have a adapter so you can charge your Tesla at a CCS location. Especially, like I said, the Tesla uh, adapter from Tesla is $250. That's a lot of money for a what if. In that uh, case, if you want the what if, buy the one from EV Dance. There's a link down below in the description. Check out their website, buy that one instead because it's a lot less money. And if what if never comes, at least you didn't waste as much money. <laughs> so now let's move over to the AC type adapter. And AC charging is uh, what we sometimes call level one, level two. So we could use our basically our mobile, our portable connector that maybe came with the vehicle. Most vehicles don't come with a charger anymore with a portable charger because the need for portable chargers has declined extremely and the availability of actually good quality home charging equipment has increased so much that 
at home, I personally would recommend you buy a unit that is hardwired and installs on your wall and stays there at all times. And then see if you really need a mobile or portable charger and portable EVSC. Because chances are you don't. And what does that tell you? Well, you probably don't need any of these AC adapters out there either because chances are today that you go somewhere and you can stay at a place that already has an EV charger. So many hotels already have chargers. Many more hotels are adding chargers. So we don't really need adapters when we, when we travel and stay at hotels in general. Also, there are many level two chargers out there where you can uh, charge at usually uh, around seven, nine or 11 kilowatts, depending on the charger. Um, at, at, you find those at restaurants, at shopping malls, at many different places. Maybe even your work provides such a charger. So again, then there is no adapter needed because charging is provided. So why do I have so many AC adapters? Well, like I said, six years ago, the situation was a little bit different and I didn't make many um, adapters myself and uh, they, they may look a little funny, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. They're, they work just fine. They're safe to use. Um, I also, I made some and changed them because here, especially in the US, we got so many different kinds of plugs. It's, it's unbelievable the amount of different plugs we have here. And uh, so I made some as I needed them. Where did I need them? Well, hardly ever. <laughs> so there is one adapter that I made that allows me to use a portable charger, like many of those that you can buy nowadays. Um, they're level one, level two, but they have only a plug for level two charging. So here in the US, they would have a NEMA 1450 uh, commonly. This is a very common plug. It's a four pin plug. And uh, so many chargers can plug into an EMA 1450, but the same charger, the same portable charger could also run on level one on your regular household outlet, but they don't even sell an adapter, most of them. So like one of those adapters that I made is from a regular 120 volt plug to the NEMA 1450. So I can use these portable uh, level two chargers that work as level one as well, um, anywhere I want to. So that is one of the adapters I made. Um, but then these uh, chargers, these level two chargers that have the NEMA 1450, they can also uh, work off any other 240 volt plug. And there's a lot of them out there, a whole bunch of them in all kinds of different varieties. Um, there is, well, obviously the NEMA 1450 is a four pin plug. There is other four pin plugs that have a different shape. Then there is uh, three pin plugs. Uh, that are out there that are 240 volts. And so, yeah, I just made adapters as I needed because going to a friend's house maybe. And uh, so you just need to know what your friends have. And uh, for me, it was like, well, do you have an electric dryer? Electric dryers, they have some sort of a 240 volt plug here in the US. So that is an option to plug into. Now, when you make an adapter, don't just go to your local hardware store and buy the uh, plug that is labeled electric dryer or dryer plug. Many people say, oh, I have a dryer plug. What can I plug into it? Well, I don't know because a dryer plug does not exist. <laughs> not for the professionals. So for professionals, like I said, the NEMA 1450 is a, um, is a specification of a plug that identifies the plug completely, how many pins it has, what the pins uh, are shaped like, their layout, uh, what voltages the plug can handle, what amperage the plug can handle. All that is in that specification. A dryer plug does not exist. That is not a specification. And uh, if I go buy a dryer plug here in Montana at my, let's say Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace Hardware, whatever, and then you go I don't know, maybe you're in Florida and you go to your hardware store and buy what's labeled as a dryer plug. We may buy two different plugs. Yes, we may buy two different plugs. So a dryer plug is not a dryer plug. Depending on the location you're in and the code requirements, you have a different dryer plug. 
And then we look at the H, even though the current code may actually require the same plug here and in your state, but my building may be so much older that I still have a plug that goes by the old standard. And so you show up with your new standard dryer plug, it won't fit. <laughs> and these hardware stores, all of these hardware stores only sell plugs that are to code in your area. So, okay, so you gotta remember that. A dryer plug does not exist. You gotta specify what it is. There are uh, many different plugs used on dryers, uh, three prong, four prong, uh, 30 amp plugs, 50 amp plugs. Um, there's a whole variety out there. So it really, really depends. So when you travel to a friend or family, ask them to take a picture of the plug, okay? So that you can see uh, what the plug looks like, what the pattern looks like, what these pins look like, okay? If they have a dryer that is plugged in there, maybe ask them to take a picture of that plug too. So that way you can identify what you need and then make an adapter or buy an adapter for what you need. Um, Tesla does sell uh, adapters. They actually sell a kit here, at least in the US. I'm not sure if they sell it in Europe too. If you're from Europe or you know, leave a comment down below if they sell a kit there for uh, different outlets. I mean, it's not any different in Europe. In Europe, also there are a whole bunch of different outlets and uh, there are the same specifications. They're obviously not NEMA specifications, there are other specifications, but they specify the same thing. So, but anyway, Tesla sells this kit in North America with, I think there's like five or six adapters in there. I do have three of them. Um, I got the, so, so Tesla has these adapters that then just plug into their mobile connector. And uh, so I got the usual, uh, plug the 120 for your household outlet. I do have the NEMA 1450 and these two came with uh, the mobile connector that was that came with our mobile uh, with our Model 3 back in 2018. Now Tesla no longer um, uh, delivers vehicles with these um, uh, mobile connectors included. You have to purchase them separate because like I said um, hardly anybody uses actual mobile connector. Most people uh, nowadays install a charger at home and don't even need any mobile connector. But I also purchased a uh, three prong plug that would actually fit what my father-in-law would call a welding outlet, which doesn't exist either, okay? There's no such thing as a welding outlet, but this is a three prong 240 volt, um, 50 amp outlet <clears throat> in that case. And I purchased this because uh, my father-in-law was living out um, away from everything, a ways away from us, even further out than we are here. And he had one of those outlets in his shop. So I purchased one just in case that I need to charge. Guess what? Just in case, never came. That's like, what if I need to charge when I get there? Well, what if never came? I purchased this adapter and never used it. Never, ever, not once. I have used a couple of my homemade ones um, from visiting friends, but that was in the early days. Guess what? They now have two NEMA 1450 outlets installed, one in their garage and uh, one at their house. And that is the most common plug on all portable uh, EV chargers today. So I don't need an adapter anymore. So um, yeah, with these different adapters, you want to be careful what you buy. Again, what if may never come. So don't just waste your money, go out and buy this whole package of like Tesla adapters. I think it's like 200 or 250 bucks for all those adapters. You probably never need one. <laughs> so, and we get more and more options for charging everywhere. So chances that you need an adapter are getting slimmer and slimmer. So it really depends on if you travel and where you travel, okay? Now, there are two adapters for AC charging that come in really handy. One is for Tesla drivers and one is for CCS card drivers. So the one for Tesla drivers is the J1772 to Tesla. And this is a US thing mainly or a North American thing. This doesn't exist in Europe because Europe has the type two plug as a standard. So Tesla's have a type two plug regardless. So they don't need that. But here uh, we need an adapter if we want to charge off a uh, regular 
a level 2 charging station somewhere out in the public that will have a J1772, then we need this adapter that goes to the Tesla plug, so we can plug it into our Tesla. This adapter comes with every Tesla, even still today, okay? You do not get a uh, charger with a Tesla anymore when you purchase one new, but you do get this adapter. So this adapter comes with every Tesla. If you don't have it or if you lost it, I recommend you buy one. Um, either from Tesla or make sure it is uh, rated high enough uh, so that you can use it with your Tesla. And so currently for all the current models, uh, it needs to be rated uh, to charge continuously at 40 amps. So that is the rating we're looking for. Uh, preferably we're looking for 80 amps. And there is a um, few out there that you can buy off the market that are rated at 80 amps but it does originally come with every Tesla. So that is that Tesla drivers can charge at a Chase 1772, but what about the other way around? If you have a CCS car or a car, well, if you have a CCS car, the upper part of your CCS is a Chase 1772, right? So you can plug your Chase 1772 right in there, but you can't use Tesla destination chargers because they got the Tesla plug. So there's a lot of Tesla destination chargers out there. What are Tesla destination chargers? Well, they're just level two chargers. They're 240 volt chargers, nothing special except for the plug. So there's these adapters. And this is where you plug in the Tesla uh, plug into the adapter and the other end plugs into your car, which is a Chase 1772. So this is Tesla to Chase 1772. And these adapters are out there. There's tons of them out there. Make sure you get one that is properly rated for your vehicle. So uh, this particular one here is a really nice one from uh, Tesla Tap. I actually have a uh, video on this one, so you can go check that video out. But there are other brands out there. There are also some out there with like a pigtail on it. So you have the J1772 uh, on one end and the Tesla plug on the other one with a little bit of cord in between. Um, but what you want to make sure is that it uh, this adapter can handle the power. So some of the Tesla destination chargers can charge at up to 80 amps because early Teslas had the option of getting a second charger installed and they were actually able to charge at 80 amps, which is over 19 kilowatts. <laughs> so there are some of those out there. Um, there's a lot of, uh, of them out there that charge at 16 kilowatts and uh, there's a lot of them out there that charge at over 11 kilowatts and so it really depends on what your vehicle can charge at some of these adapters are only rated at 32 amps so if you have a chevy bolt euv it charges at 40 amps or 48 even oh now i don't even remember i'm not even sure do you remember is it 40 or 48 huh I don't remember now, holy moly. I know our 2020 Chevy Bolt was only 32 amps, but the EV, the EUV uh, went up. Uh, now I don't remember if it's 40 or 48, but exactly that's what you need to know. How uh, fast can it charge? What are the kilowatts or the amperage? And make sure that your adapter can handle that. So most Tesla destination chargers will put out uh, up to 48 amps because that is commonly what a Tesla charges at these days. But not all of them do, but most of them will. Um, but it comes down to what does your EV take? So make sure you have a properly rated one. This particular one is rated at 80 amps. I did a review of an other brand and that one was also able to charge at 80 amps. So it is probably the easiest and simplest if you get one that is rated at 80 amps because then you don't have to worry about it. There is no car out there, no EV out there that charges at more than 80 amps. There were those few Teslas and I believe the Ford Lightning can charge at I think 70 amps on AC, but I'm not sure if that is only on the Ford proprietary equipment with their special charger or if that is with any charger. But some Tesla destination chargers do provide uh, 80 amps because they were installed years ago. They're still out there, they still function and they can charge uh, uh, at 80 amps. So it's best if you have a high rated uh, adapter, then you do not have to worry about it. But this, again, this is an adapter for all the CCS J1772 EV drivers out there that you wanna have. Um, unless you're just doing daily driving, then you don't need it either, I guess, because if you're just going for and back from home to work, doing your chores in town or whatever, you don't need 
any of these. You don't need an adapter at all. You also don't need a portable charger. Just get yourself a nice setup at home that makes it easy for you to plug in, that has plenty of power so you can charge quickly if the need arises. Um, there's really no difference in uh, prices for like home chargers where one goes only 32 amps and the other one goes 48 amps. You can find them in the same price range these days. Uh, all being relatively good quality. I mean, there's always a bad one in there somewhere, right? But um, if you have a nice home charger and you just drive for and back to town, you do your daily driving with this car and that's all you do and always ever done, you don't need any of these adapters. And if you travel, you don't necessarily need any of these adapters unless you're going off the beaten path. And that's where I would recommend PlugShare. Uh, check out uh, the PlugShare app because uh, the PlugShare app lists all your charging options, not just official chargers that are out there. They also list like campgrounds where other people already charged or hotels that don't actually have a charger, but they have outlets somewhere and they allow you to use them for charging. So that is where you would look when you go off the beaten path with your electric car so that you can see what is out there and what options you have and what adapters you would need. The, in the PlugShare app, it's all clearly in there what plug it is. Uh, it even has a picture of it so you can actually see is it a four prong, is it a five prong, what is it? There's usually good descriptions. Uh, usually there's also a phone number to a place so you can call them up and say, hey, you guys still got this plug, is it still okay if I plug in with my EV? And if they say yes, well, that's the time when you would get an adapter if you need one to go there and charge. But now let's look back in six years. Um, we started with the Tesla Model 3 six years ago. And uh, we, we got two years later, we got the Chevy Bolt. And then another year later, we got our 2013 Model S. And well, how many times did I desperately need any of my adapters? Or how many times, not desperately, how many times did I need an adapter? Well, the only time I needed one of my adapters was when I went to visit my friends. <laughs> That was the only time, okay? And this was a homemade adapter. Um, at that time, this is a few years ago. Well, this is about three years ago. There were not as many adapters available out there. Nowadays, you can buy all these adapters out there. They're not necessarily cheap. So don't waste your money if you don't need them. So I made my own so that I could charge at my friend's place. Um, but that was it. So there's one adapter that I really needed all the other times of traveling, I never needed any of the adapters. Yes, I took advantage of them. So when we picked up our Chevy Bolt, we went to a hotel in Seattle because we spent a few days there. That hotel did not have a charger, but they had regular household type outlets. And well, that happened to work with the Chevy Bolt uh, EVSE that it came with because that had a 120 volt plug. So I really didn't need an adapter, <laughs> but that could be one of those places where you would need an adapter um, so that you can use a regular household outlet at a hotel. Also, traveling to uh, the cozy cabin in Island Park, 300 miles, miles from here, uh, we only have a, or only had a, a regular household outlet there. So, and it was convenient to just go there directly and then plug in there at just 120 volts. And so with uh, the Chevy Bolt, that was no problem. With uh, the Tesla uh, mobile connector, we just used the adapter for the 120 volt outlet. Was it needed? No, because just over the hill in West Yellowstone, there was a Tesla supercharger. So it was not needed. Just like charging the, the Chevy Bolt in Seattle at the hotel was not needed. There, there's plenty of chargers around in Seattle. So <laughs> um, <clears throat> we just used them once in a while, but 99% of the time, we don't, we didn't even use the mobile charger. I mean, 99% of the time, the mobile chargers we had, they were just stored away in our car, wherever they go or best fit or wherever, whatever. And that's just where they were sitting. And we take them with us everywhere we go and really don't need them, really not. Um, we took advantage of one of the mobile chargers we had uh, last vacation, last August. When we were in Las Vegas, the resort we went to didn't have EV charging, but they had outlets in the garage. So we plugged in. 
Did we need it? No. <laughs> a couple blocks up the road, that's where the closest Tesla supercharger was. And right across the street, there was an Electrify America where you can charge the CCS car. So really, uh, my recommendation is do not waste your money on adapters for EV charging unless you know you will be needing them. And you know ahead of time usually. It's, it's probably not like you all of a sudden, a spur of the moment, take off on a long trip out into the boonies. Probably not. Uh, you can be like me and purchase an adapter in case you go visit family and would have to charge there for some reason. But as I said, I never even used that adapter either. So yeah, you really don't need any adapters. And basically you really don't need a portable charger. <laughs> um, it may come in handy. Like I said, we use them once in a while uh, because it, it, it made it maybe a little bit more convenient, but maybe it didn't because uh, depending on what you can plug into, you may not get enough charge anyway. And then you still have to go to the DC fast charger and charge up. So now I've been mostly talking and uh, about these uh, American plugs here. That doesn't matter where you're at in the world. Like I said, you have your specifications there. Just have your family member take a picture if you're going somewhere and you think you need to plug in there or you want to plug in there, uh, have them take a picture. Uh, and according to that, buy the plug, make your adapter or buy an adapter, whatever. Um, this is basically all the same um, around the world. The voltages are a little bit different. And uh, you may be in a country where you have less public charging than uh, like we do here in the US. In the US, it is very frequent nowadays to have public charging. Um, Europe too, uh, it is very frequent. So um, Canada, Canada nowadays has tons of chargers too. Um, there's even some chargers up in Alaska. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is becoming uh, so much more available, easy to charge that uh, adapters are needed less and less. So again, I recommend do not buy any adapter unless you know you will be using it on a trip, you will be needing it. Um, but yeah, I, I done a trip to Las Vegas just using Electrify America, uh, charging with, uh, a, uh, with the CCS adapter. But that was just because I wanted to know how good or how bad it was and made a video about it. But um, that was just for me. I did not need that adapter really. Um, there were plenty of superchargers. And uh, well, I upgraded my Model 3 so it can CCS charge because uh, I think uh, until 2020 or 2021, uh, Tesla's did not CCS charge, by the way. These previous models need to be upgraded. There is some hardware and software change. I did that myself. I made a video about it. So if you have one of those, uh, you can go check that out. Um, and I did that because I decided to go from Missoula to Kalispell and Kalispell for some reason doesn't have a supercharger yet. It was planned back in 2019, never came. It's been planned in 2023. It hasn't come yet. It's still on the list. So hopefully we get it here in 2024. But so the only DC fast charger available was a CCS type. And so I thought, oh, cool, why not? do the upgrade and see how that works and then go up there and then I can fast charge. Did I need it? No, there's plenty of level two charging available, even free level two charging. N nice, right in the parking structure where we went, there was a, there was a, a few, I think there was four free level two chargers <laughs> and we parked there anyway because it was convenient to walk around town from right there. And by the time we had our, um, we ate lunch and walked around, did this and that and blah, blah, blah. We had enough charge to make it back. So we really didn't need it. On top of that, well, I had it. So I went to this uh, charger and that charger, there was nobody else there. And it was rated at, I think, 75 kilowatts. And it would split if there's multiple cars there. There was nobody there and it only charged at like 25. So, <laughs> so basically, did I need it? No. Could it have been more convenient? Yes, it could have, but the charger didn't even work. So waste the money, basically. <laughs> for me, it's interesting. I like those projects. But for most EV drivers out there, uh, do not waste your money on adapters unlike, unless you know you need them. All right, so that is it for this video. Blap long enough here. Um, 
make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Give us a thumbs up for this video. Also go down below in the description and click the link to our Redbubble store. We got some cool stuff there, t-shirts and other things with cool motifs and things so you can show off that you're part of the future already. Well, in any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye.